Hi, this is Jack from iOS DevTools. Today, we're talking about Paw, an API testing client. Paw is a native macOS app that lets you send API requests, inspect responses, generate client code, and export API definitions. Paw was founded by an iOS developer, Misha, in 2013. It was acquired by Rapid API in 2021. It's currently priced at 50 US dollars for lifetime access and it has a one month free trial without credit card required. We scoured the internet to find out what iOS developers think of Paw. Developers love the fact that Paw is a native macOS app. They love its beautiful and simple design. Several specifically mentioned that the lack of some advanced features actually made Paw easier to use. At least two Hacker News comments mentioned chaining of API requests as a killer feature for Paw and they love the fact there are so many options when exporting application code into Objective-C or Swift. For the cons, Paw is missing some advanced features such as saving responses or automated testing. Paw were also a little slow to introduce GraphQL functionality. That came up a couple of times, but they do have it now. Also, Paw were recently acquired. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's worth bearing in mind. As we've discussed, Paw is a great API client but it's not the only one. For instance, there is Postman, which is the most famous, most powerful, but also the most complex. Secondly, there is Insomnia, which is popular and open source, and there are many others, too many to list in this video. Now we're going to just play around a little bit with Paw and show you some of the things that we've discussed. And today we're just gonna play around with a nice, simple API that we'll link to in the description. It is an API for a bookstore and it does things like return books and allows you to place orders. We're first going to make a very simple get request. So here we're going to hit this API, which is hosted on Glitch, the simple books API, and we're going to request books. We pressed return key to fire it off. And here we get back a list of books that are in the store. So we can see there's the Russian, there's the vanishing half. You can see things like the request and you can see info and you can see that you got back a 200. And it's very nice, simple, simple uh, application. Now we're going to chain a request. Let's say we want to order a book and we hit up the API endpoint slash orders. We'd send a post request and we put in the book ID that we want and the customer name in the body. Let's try this. There is an error because we're missing authorization header. So we need to send a bearer token along with our request. So let's do an auth request and then we'll send the token that we get back from the auth request in our header for our order. So we've set up the auth request and we're just gonna put a different email. From this request, we get back an access token. We'll just refresh this and we will send that access token along with our book order. So in the auth header, we can go to OAuth2, go down to tokens, bear a token, and we right click on here and we send along the response to a filtered body. Which filtered body? Um, a response from the auth. So we name that auth, one of our other requests. And the body format is JSON. And we're going to put the JSON path. Uh, no, we're going to put the key path. And we're going to select access token. And it's going to auto fill it so that when we place our order, it will automatically pass along the header and we'll be able to create our order. And then we can go into our orders to get all the orders that we've got. And you can see that we've already put this in. So when we request this, we should see the orders that have been made. So we can see there was one order for the ID of four and the customer name is Jack. Finally, we're gonna talk about exporting code into our application. Since this is iOS DevTools, we're gonna focus on the iOS code that you can export. So you can get Swift and Objective-C application code. And what's really cool about Paw is that they have lots of different options for the libraries that you can use. 
we've got Alamo Fire for Swift and Moya. And for Objective-C, we've got a few options as well. NSURL session, AF networking, NSURL connection. And you can just explore this and use it in your code. So it could save you a lot of time there. So there's a lot of cool things about Poor, but what do you think? Let us know in the comments if you like Poor or if you prefer something else. Thank you. Bye-bye.